I actually dropped out of high school at 16, got my first data science job from. It's absolutely worth putting in that effort. If I could do that part again, I would definitely do. High school dropout to a machine learning engineer at Twitch. This is not a typical machine learning engineer profile you would imagine, right? Well, I just talked to Marina and here's how she actually did it and how you can also break into tech industry too. Let's get into the interview. You're going to want to hear this. So I was looking at your profile and I noticed you have a very interesting background. <laughs> you didn't go straight into engineering from college. Tell us more about your background. I actually dropped out of high school at 16. Um, I wanted to be a tattoo artist. Then I decided, actually, being a tattooer is not for me. I want to be president. Let's go study uh, political science. Do something to try to save the world. I graduated from UC Berkeley, and I spent a few years working in nonprofits and on political campaigns. And that quickly burned me out. So I found another opportunity managing a small jewelry company. But at one point, it was time for the next phase of my career. And I didn't know what to do. So I got my master's in public policy. At that time, I had never coded at all. I had no idea that data science or machine learning existed. And it was just kind of by happy chance that I fell into some courses at that program that were focused on statistics and coding with R and machine learning, um, all of this kind of like core data science skill set, but with a social science tilt. My first job after graduating from my master's program was just at a small data science firm in Berlin. I studied in Germany. And really, I was focused on like just pure data science at the beginning. It was, again, another kind of happy accident that I fell into machine learning uh, because my first data science job back in the US happened to be machine learning focused. During the course of that role, I discovered that I actually really love doing production work. And I got more and more and more into the engineering side of things. Seven year journey from a completely different background, lots of twists and turns, but made it here and uh, I've been really enjoying it since then. You literally discovered things by trying it out. Yep. After trying out those jobs, yep. you are now a machine learning engineer at Twitch. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about the type of work that you do at Twitch. My role in particular is super awesome because I've had the opportunity to work across a ton of different project spaces on many different teams. My primary focus areas have been on machine learning infrastructure and content understanding using Gen AI. And then beyond that, I've also had the opportunity to work on fraud detection, financial forecasting, and also the recommendation system. A little bit of everything. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so did you get hired as a machine learning engineer? No, I was hired as a machine learning focused data scientist, but it turned out that my existing background and my skill set was really more aligned with a um, machine learning engineer. So it was kind of just an, an example of how these titles can be very ambiguous and very different across companies. Just made a video about how once you're in tech, mm -hmm. the roles are very fluid. Yes. And I think more and more in the future, it's going to be even more fluid. Definitely. So we talked a little bit about the types of projects that you work mm -hmm. on, but what is a typical day usually like for you? It varies quite a lot. So it really depends on what phase of a project I'm in. If it's uh, early stages, then it could be a lot of meetings, a lot of reading papers, writing documents, just kind of doing the project planning side of things. In the early phases of actually doing the project, then I might have a data scientist job for a while. So I might be doing just a lot of SQL, exploratory data analysis, feature engineering, experimental smaller scale stuff. And then at the point where I have a model working that I'm happy with, then I'm building the whole pipeline closer to software engineering uh, style things. And then after that, I might have another phase of more writing and stakeholder management. So it really depends on the phase I am in the project. So I might have a few hours of meetings and reading and then a few hours of coding and deep work in a given day. I think that's why it's so hard to explain the difference between data science and machine learning mm -hmm. because there's so much overlap. And I think that also largely depends on the company because I've been a data scientist who did the end-to-end -end production work. And then I've also seen machine learning engineers who don't do any of the actual model development and just do the deployment or any kind of variety of uh, combinations of those things can happen too. That's a good point. How big is Twitch? About a thousand people, I think, yeah, full-time. Because I used to work at Meta, mm -hmm. um, I think the bigger the company is, the narrower your yes, scope yeah, is. I think so. so a thousand people is relatively small for a tech company, mm -hmm. and that's probably why you do a little bit of everything. And we've been talking about how there's so much overlap between data science and machine learning. Mm -hmm. But if you were to have to differentiate the two, are they similar and different? 
a data scientist also has a wide range of potential things they could be focused on. They might be just doing experiments, just A-B testing, data analysis, statistics, that kind of thing. Or they might be doing something like that in addition to machine learning. But in most cases, a data scientist will be working on smaller scale contained things. So they'll be doing a little bit more the strategic thinking and stakeholder management, and then maybe doing a little bit more of the model development in a notebook where they're really getting into the nitty gritty. On average, a machine learning engineer will spend less time on the details of the model and more time on the systems around that model. For the difference between machine learning engineer and AI engineer is a machine learning engineer would train models from scratch and an AI engineer would not. Typically, a machine learning learning engineer would potentially be also working with pre-trained AI models, but they would be maybe building a model using your own user data to try to predict fraud, for example. Versus an AI engineer would just be working with an existing foundation model that perhaps they fine tune or do something on top of, but they're not training that foundation model. So that's the difference that I've been using. I like that because I recently did an analysis of mm -hmm. all the skills that are required for machine learning versus AI versus data science. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that the skill set asked for in machine learning and data science is more narrower mm -hmm. than AI because for AI engineering, you could be asked for anything, right? Yeah, like, definitely. Number one question that we get often is like, is AI going to replace us? What do you think? I mean, it's a big question uh, that I honestly don't have an answer for. I think there definitely is risk. I don't think that that risk is coming tomorrow. There are really smart people on all sides of this opinion. So there are people that are completely legit who think that next year we're going to have AGI, everyone's going to be out of a job. Then there's people within that group who think it's going to be utopia and people who think we're all going to die. Even in that group, there's already a difference of opinion. And then there's other people who say, yes, but over the course of a couple of decades, we're going to see a slow transition. And then some people who think we'll never have truly disruptive AI. So I'm not 100% sure where I fall on that. I would say probably towards the probably not next year, probably not never somewhere in between. So we, we talked about all the different definitions and whether we're going to be extinct or not. For people who are interested in breaking into these roles, what's your recommendation? What should they be studying? I think it depends largely on what skills you already bring. So if you are brand new as students, I think the very first things that I would prioritize are how to code. Actually, even though we have a lot of AI coding tools, I think this is a really fundamental skill that you're probably still going to need in some way for a long time. And learning how to code is great because it gives you a lot of potential avenues to explore if you find out machine learning or AI isn't for you. There's still a lot of things you can do with that skill set. That's where I would start. And then I would prioritize building things as soon as possible. Build some little models, even just in a notebook to get started, and then find things in your daily life that you want to solve. A problem that you could build a little mini app to solve in your own life. That would make an excellent project. Starting with the practical machine learning skills after you have this, this foundation. And then after that, you can get more into the math and the theory. This is a strategy that works really well for me. A lot of people will give you the opposite advice and say start with math. And I think if you're someone who vibes with math and or who was recently in school, that's great advice. But for many of us who came later in life, I never did calculus ever. I had to learn it on my own after I was already in the field. So if I had started my very first introduction to machine learning, calculating the chain rule by hand, I would have been like, I can't do this. This isn't for me. Get excited about really applying things first and then go back and kind of figure out what, what you're actually doing. I can see that it can be really discouraging for some people mm -hmm. because I do see some comments saying like, oh, I can't do math. Should I give up? Right. Yeah. If you're not vibing with math, maybe try coding first and see if that works for you. Yeah. Let's try out different things until you find your footing. Exactly. Because there's a lot of flavors, right? If you're really averse to math, maybe pure data science isn't going to be for you, but you might be a great AI engineer. That was your recommendation for people who are getting into tag. Mm -hmm. For people who want to stay up to date with tag, what's your recommendation? So I have a couple of approaches. Personally, I really like to read technical books. I try to do about one technical book a quarter. If it's possible to read with other people in a reading group, then that is great. If you have a reading group at, at work or even kind of an online community, that can be a really good way to stay motivated and a little bit more engaged with the material if you're actually discussing it. So reading, continuing to work on personal projects kind of forever, ideally. I know that doesn't sound fun hearing that you're going to have to work outside of work, but in the best version of this, it's not painful because you're actually having fun with what you're building. In terms of staying up to date 
on every tool and tech? Honest answer is I don't. Instead, try to pay as much attention to the business cases that I'm trying to solve as possible, and then work backwards to find what tool in this moment is the best fit for that. Thinking really deeply about what my team or the company needs, how could I use machine learning to solve that? And then at that point going, this is the project that I'm trying to address, what tools are at my disposal, then I learn about those tools. Trying to stay on top of every single new model release, every single new tool, every single new framework, you're gonna go crazy and you're not gonna use most of them anyway. I think it's better to be focused on results and use the tools to get to those results versus focused on tools. It can be pretty overwhelming yeah, sure. to learn everything. It's so much. Yeah. So what is one book that you read most recently? I recently read AI Engineering by Chipuyan. Everyone's talking about it because it's great. I also really loved her previous one, uh, Designing Machine Learning Systems. Ah. So I think those are my top two reps. That's a popular one. Oh. So we talked a little bit about skills that you need to learn to break into tech. What have you seen as the biggest gap that newcomers usually tend to have when they're trying to break into tech? Some common difficulties are getting overwhelmed with all the courses and taking infinite courses without actually building things. Another thing that I have found holds people back is simultaneously overestimating and underestimating competition. Folks will think, I can't possibly get in. Everyone is so smart. This is so hard. They'll have an imposter syndrome, which makes a lot of sense. It's a challenging field. But they think everyone who works at big tech is some kind of genius and they couldn't possibly work there. And that's not true. There are a couple of geniuses, but most of us are not. Thinking that you're not prepared for something that maybe you actually could be. But on the other hand, not being prepared for how long it's going to take potentially to get that first job and how hard you're going to have to work. It won't be enough to just apply to a couple jobs on LinkedIn for 99% of people. You're going to have to go above and beyond with projects, with networking, with putting yourself out there, potentially working for free for a nonprofit or volunteering for a local business, whatever it takes to get that initial experience so that you are competitive. So it's a little bit of both to, to put up with a lot of competition and also believing that you can because you probably can. So you've been working for about seven years in tech, mm -hmm. in data and machine learning. Yep. If you were to start your career all over again, what would you do today? When I was originally learning, I got very overwhelmed thinking I needed to learn everything. To approach that, I took a lot of courses and, and those were good to an extent, but Many of those skills I haven't actually used and I have forgotten everything I did in the course. So if I could do that part again, I would definitely do projects. And I would set my sights a little bit bigger for the projects that I was working on. When I was building portfolio projects in the past, it would be much more narrow. Like, I want to learn this tool. I will do a project with this tool. Now I would say, especially with the availability of AI coding tools that can help you if you don't have any software engineering experience, you can just make an app. And maybe it sucks, that's fine. Think of something in your real life that you could improve in some way using machine learning and just build it. As you go, you will learn about each component way more in depth than you would if you were just reading or just taking courses. So you don't have to feel like you know how to do every single thing before you start that project. Just chip away at it bit by bit. I would also be pretty aggressive about networking. I actually got my first job in the field, my first data science job from cold emailing. I just sent a bunch of emails to companies that I thought could maybe have a data science team and everyone ignored me except one. And that one turned into an interview, turned into my first job. I can attest to the power of networking and really putting yourself out there. And it's incredibly uncomfortable, but it can give you outsized returns. And when I say aggressive about networking, I don't mean aggressively approach people, <laughs> but I would be very consistent with reaching out to people as much as I could. The last thing is just to be optimistic because it's going to take a long time but the rewards are definitely there if you put in the time and effort. This is a really great, fulfilling career that pays you enough to live a good life and you get to work on engaging projects and constantly learning, you're never bored. So it's absolutely worth putting in that effort. Keep your spirits up for the long haul. At the end of the day, you just need one person to yes. say yes. Yes, just need one. Thank you so much for your time and answering all our questions and thank you for watching. Bye.